Hey everybody, um, I went to the drugstore because I needed a new setting powder, um, and I don't like to spend a whole lot of money when it comes to setting powders because it just sets your face. So I always like to look around the makeup there uh, because I really like makeup and I'm really like into finding drugstore products that I like. I do a mixture of drugstore and high-end. So for the most part, I tend to stay high-end for foundations high-end for eyeshadow palettes and things of that like, but I do like trying out new stuff. And one of my favorite brands is Wet n Wild. Um, Wet n Wild's been around for a while, and in terms of drugstore products, they've actually come really far um, in regards to their formula, pricing, things like that. So it's always been a relatively cheap brand, which is nice because, I mean, we all want to experiment and, you know, express our creativity, just not with $80 eyeshadow palettes. So I actually found uh, this new Rosé in the Air uh, Color Icon 10 Pan Palette. Now, these palettes have been around for a while, not necessarily the 10 pan ones, but they have had trios that I used to get, and those are actually a pretty good formula as well. So I was noticing that with the coloring, it looks really similar to a palette that I already own and paid basically thrice as much for, and that is the Modern Renaissance palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is something I've owned for a while, and I actually use this pretty much every day. I don't know if you can tell by the packaging, but this sucker is pretty worn out, and the shadows are not necessarily, like, diminishing, but I've definitely hit pan on Love Letter. That's my favorite shade. So, um, the purpose of this video is because I wanted to share with you a dupe palette for the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette, and that is the Wet n Wild palette. Uh, you can probably tell, but I'm already wearing both palettes on my eyes. Uh, I'm wearing the Modern Renaissance on my right and the Wet n Wild on my left. Now, there are a few differences, but those differences are very minuscule. One of the differences is that, obviously, it's a 10-pan palette, so this pa palette only has 10 colors. Whereas the Modern Renaissance has 14? 14 shades. So there's a difference in four colors. Now what I've noticed is uh, the only missing colors are Burnt Orange, from what I can tell. Uh, Venetian Red is missing as well, but honestly, Venetian Red can be mixed with Red Ochre and Love Letter. I think I've tried it before and it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty similar. So. I, to compare, I'm having a little bit of a hard time with this because I'm not used to making videos, but uh, yeah, the transition shade down here is most close to raw sienna in the Anastasia palette. Then we have a dupe for Cypress Umber. This is going to be Antique Bronze. This, one of my favorite colors, is Buon Fresco. This, obviously Love Letter. This would be Red Ochre. This... I'm gonna say Primavera. This one is closest to Realgar, and yeah, I think that's the closest to Realgar. This one is gonna be Tempera. Now, Tempera is a little bit more of a cream shade, whereas this comes on a little more, a little lighter than what the Tempera one comes on to, but honestly, on the lid, once you blend it out, it looks very, very similar. And this one uh, resembles Warm Taupe pretty well. So, you're getting 10 of the shades. And um, those 10 shades pretty much cover all the bases. I mean, I don't use every single color in this palette when I'm doing a look, obviously, and Wet n Wild does have other, other um, palettes like these that have different colors in them that you can probably use to get the same effect. And yeah, so the only colors I see really missing are going to be Red Ochre, or Red Ochre, Golden Orange, Vermeer because there is the Primavera shade in there. It's more gold, but they don't have one of these, which I mean, it's not really a big deal. Uh, Venetian Red and I guess Burnt Orange. So those four colors and you could probably mix them to kind of get a similar color path. So I am wearing the Modern Renaissance on this eye and I am wearing the Wet n Wild on this eye. I think I just said that. I did. Anyways. Um, the differences. So the differences are obviously that, like I just said, uh, this one only has 10 colors. Another one of the differences I noticed is that Modern Renaissance, it takes less to put on, and I've noticed that with all the Anastasia palettes, I own pretty much every single one that they've come out with aside from the Mario palette, so 
Uh, I've noticed with the Anastasia palettes they're very pigmented, which is one of the reasons that they're so pricey. It's because you're paying good money for a good product, and that's what I love about them, and I can't take that away from them. So whenever you're dipping into these palettes, it only takes a couple taps, and you get pretty much the payoff that you need. And I noticed it comes on... It goes on a little more pigmented, but that's not really a big deal, because you can just pack on color if you want to build up the pigment. And that's what's good about these shadows, is they're very forgiving and easy to blend, so you can always um, pack on and build up product with these. Um, another thing I noticed about these is the blend is obviously not as creamy as this one, but I'm not really mad at it just because it's really not even that big of a difference. These do go on like a dream. I'm not gonna say any bad things against Anastasia just because I do love the brand and I actually did just purchase another one of their $42 palettes. But when you're looking at this and when you want makeup on a budget, when you're not really fussed with spending so much money on a product, I mean, this is a pretty good dupe. I'm actually really surprised because I noticed the color and I... people try to dupe brands all the time, like that's just the case. There's a brand Makeup Revolution where they do dupes for pretty much every big makeup company. Like they just did a, a dupe of the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, I believe, and I've not received that product or bought that product, but it looks to be pretty similar and I've watched other people apply it and, you know. Um, dupes are good for people who don't want to spend millions of dollars on makeup. And while I am one of those people where all of my free money and all of my uh, luxury money tends to go to makeup, I can appreciate a good dupe, and honestly, I will probably be using this along with the Modern Renaissance, just because it's an extra amount of product. Um, I really don't have any uh, cons with this palette. It's a little bit powdery when you kick up product, but that's the same with the Anastasia one. And rather than just tapping into this like you would with the Anastasia, let me see if I can show you. Okay. So with this one, it's a little brushes. I'm not going to do this on the eye since I already am wearing a look on the eye. But with the Anastasia ones, these are so pigmented, the color kind of just falls out. So when you tap it, you get a lot of kickback, but you only have to dip in once or twice. Um, and it's not that bad if you know how to actually work with the shadows. So if you only tap lightly, you're not going to get a lot of kickback. With these, the pigment doesn't go on as much. So you kind of have to work a little bit more to build up the product and get more on the brush. But, you know, at the end of the day, they go on pretty, pretty much the same. I'm going to do a couple swatches just so you can kind of see how they... Pay off, and I need you guys to keep in mind that swatches are nothing about what they're going to look like on the eye. It just gives you an idea of the color and what it's going to look like with your skin. These have nothing to do with how they perform on the eye, because I've had some palettes that have swatched terribly that work beautiful on my eyes, and some palettes that have swatched great that are kind of like, eh, on my eyes. So I'm going to swatch a couple of the colors so that they're, you can kind of get an idea of the similarities. Um, I'm going to do this color right here, and it's going to be the Bon Fresco dupe in the Modern Renaissance palette. I'm going to swatch that right there, and I'm going to use a clean finger to swatch Bon Fresco. Now, these colors aren't 100% the same, but they're pretty darn close. I don't know if you can see that. I'm really not good at swatching, and I'm definitely not good at making videos. Um, but yeah, see, the colors are pretty similar. Let me see if I can, with a clean finger, clean set of fingers, I'll do I'll do the dupe for Love Letter, which is my most used color in the Modern Renaissance palette. I use it all the time. We're going to do that right here. That's Love Letter. And then with my thumb, I'll do this one. And that's, I guess, another difference. The shades in here aren't named, but who really cares? And actually, oh goodness. This one swatches a little bit more. Granted, I did use my thumb, so that's probably why. But the colors are very, very, very similar. I won't do any more because I don't really have any more clean fingers. <laughs> um, and I don't have any makeup wipes because I'm an unprepared, I'm an unprepared non-makeup guru. But um, my point is, you can find really good brands at the drugstore. And Wet n Wild has always been one of my favorite brands, even before I had a job and before I couldn't spend money. On myself, Wet n Wild was one of my favorite brands. 
So I remember actually using a blue shadow from Wet n Wild for my uh, my homecoming my freshman year. That was not a good look, but that's okay. We've learned, and I'm just it's just a testament to how much further makeup has gone in the world, especially in regards to drug drugstore products who are actually really stepping up their game. And another good thing about Wet n Wild is, and this is important to me, I don't know if it's important to you, but um, all of their products are pretty much cruelty free. And you can see that on, on the pan, it's right there, cruelty free. So that means they're cruelty free, they don't test on animals. Now I'm not necessarily sure if this is a vegan product or not, because vegan is obviously different from cruelty free. Uh, vegan means that there's no animal products whatsoever in the product. Cruelty free just means that they don't test on animals. And uh, for those of you who don't know what brands aren't cruelty free or not, there's um, a lot of information out there on the internet that will tell you what isn't and what is, especially with high end. Um, Anastasia is cruelty free. And that's another good thing that I cannot take away from Anastasia. I absolutely love all of their products. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't think that this is 100% as great as this one, but for five, six bucks, you can't really beat it, you know? So if you're on a budget and if you want to get sort of the same looks, then I would definitely recommend Wet n Wild. Now if you do want to spend your money on the price your products, they are worth it. I believe that it is every bit as worth it as it used to be, as before I discovered this just today. And I'm honestly going to keep using this and I probably will, when I run out of these shadows, repurchase it just because I love the way that the shadows perform and I want to support a brand like Anastasia. I have no problem supporting My camera died, um, but what I was saying was, uh, this doesn't come with a brush, but that's okay. Um, I don't have any qualms with that if you do want a brush. I mean, they're like, if you want a, if you want a cheap brush, Wet n Wild and e.l.f., who is also the cruelty-free amazing brand. I'm actually wearing e.l.f. eyeliner right now. I don't use anything else <laughs> because I don't see a reason in spending a million dollars on an eyeliner. It works the same. But anyways, if you check e.l.f., uh, they do have really cheap eyeshadow brushes as well as Wet n Wild, and they're cruelty-free as well. Um, that's the only other difference I can tell because the Anastasia does come with a brush and I don't know how other people feel about the brush but I actually use and like this brush and I do use all the brushes that come with the Anastasia palettes just because I like them. They're good brushes. Um, but yeah, that's how I got this eye look. I did two different eyeshadow palettes on two different eyes and I'm actually really really surprised with how well it came out. I asked my grandmother just a few minutes ago, hey, what do you think about my eyeshadow? And she was like, oh, it looks really pretty. And I was like, can't you tell anything, you know, different? She's like, am I supposed to? And I was like, $5, $42. She was like, oh. So if you're on a budget and if you want to uh, get looks similar to the modern renaissance like you see on Instagram or whatever, just play with your own shadows and you want to you know, experiment and not spend all your money if you have other things that you need to buy, then I would definitely 100% recommend this. This is amazing. I'm very, very pleasantly surprised. Okay, so that was a little bit awkward. I'm not really good at videos. I don't really do videos. I am a lover of makeup, but I might make some more if <laughs> it turns out people like them. So. And I will include photos of the makeup close up so that you can really see the difference in the video if I can. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.